Well, it's Sunday morning. I'm exhausted after all the work yesterday, but I still want to get the belly on this guy. Uh, I rechecked all my measurements. I rechecked the airframe level, and then I rechecked the level on each of these ribs, the level on the front and rear spar, and I really can't tell. Um, I'm pretty much beyond my limits of being able to measure this with the equipment that I have. So I've got a digital level that goes down to the tenth of a degree, and they're all perfectly level as far as I can tell. Uh, so I'm really happy with how this all came together. As far as next steps go, um, these blocks have got to get fixed in. Right now they're just kind of temporarily clamped in place to get the position of the gear set. And I'm going to need to drill these. Now the big thing is there are two pairs of bolts that go through here. There's one set that just holds this block in place. And then there's another set that will eventually um, form the outboard wing rear spar to this center stub wing uh, rear spar and those are not countersunk. So I don't have the countersink tool, but I'm basically gonna drill all four holes and I'll just put some bolts in there temporarily to hold stuff in until I get a countersink tool in. That way I can at least still move forward with this because I'd like to get the belly on today. These blocks are in and they dried. Um, there's still some layups that need to happen. So there's a, a layup on the inside of there. There's another one on the inside of here. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna glue the belly on because this is plenty stiff and sturdy as it is. I'm gonna glue the belly on, kind of get all of that stuff done, and that's gonna stiffen up the whole fuselage because right now there's a little bit of flexing with the side of the fuselage. This is really stiff, but I wanna get all this kind of tied together. So I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna do all my gear doors because I think that'll be easier while the airframe is inverted. Then I'm gonna flip it over so it's up on its feet, and then I'm gonna go in and do the structural layups. I'll do the cockpit closeout ribs, uh, and I'll do all that stuff then, just because I think that's gonna be a little bit easier when the plane is upside down, so I'm not having to work around the belly. But uh, this is where we're at. I'm gonna get these bolted in, and then I can start gluing on the belly. The goal is to get that done today, and I don't think that'll take too long. All right, I got the rear blocks positioned somewhat. I still need to get a 100 degree countersink tool to put the other two screws in, but those are in good enough for now. And I'm actually doing this out of order. Usually they want you to put the belly pan on and then do the gear, but that seemed a little bit weird to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get all this ready. I'm gonna peel the peel ply off of the belly pan, get it positioned and start clicking and clamping it into place uh, just so I can get ready to glue it in. What a mess. I did not expect that to be that hard to peel off. All right, so the next step is they want us to drill these holes out that are kind of clearly marked in the mold here, and then Clico this in, and that's gonna help us kind of align everything up. <clears throat> All right, so the next steps for this guy are basically to trim the front and back so that it will line up because um, this extends out. You don't want these overlapping, you want them to butt together, and then you'll put a tape right in this crease so that it all sits nice and flush. So I'm gonna go through and kind of mark this out on where I need to cut it and then take it back off the plane and trim this back so that it should fit nice. Uh, so the belly is glued in, and I just finished sanding the uh, joggles where it meets the front half of the fuselage and the tail back there. Um, basically, next steps right now, I'm going to go ahead and cut up some strips that are going to fit in here. They want two bit of tape to kind of join these together. All right, so I apologize. A lot of this has just been more update videos and not actual clips of me doing the work. I've been pretty busy with my actual job that is paying for this, um, so I haven't had a big chance to really do a good job with this production. Um, regardless, I'm at the point where I'm ready to start marking and cutting out the doors. So I got these tips sanded down to where they're good. Um, on this side as well. And I've got a little bit of work to do filling this in. That epoxy didn't penetrate as well as I hoped it would, but it is what it is. Um, and then I went through and I measured out where the BL, uh, where the cockpit closeout ribs are gonna be, which is BL 20 and a half-ish. 
Um, and I've actually been doing stuff a little bit out of order here. All right, so how I've been doing things is not the order that Lancer wants you to build this in. Um, and in my mind, it's because their order didn't exactly make a whole lot of sense. It doesn't, it doesn't. So what they want you to do is kind of do all of this glass work, put the belly in, cut the doors off, do all that stuff before you fit the gear. And they do that because in the manual it says to fit the gear to the doors. Um, in my mind, that's so stupid. So if the gear in this instance is the most alignment critical part, the last thing I want to do is cut this gear door out willy nilly based on where it says our typical locations and then I have to try and fit the gear to that. I would rather get the landing gear in a, as good of an alignment as I possibly can, which I think I've done, and then fit the doors to that. That makes a lot more sense to me. Now, I understand the reason they do that is because the inner door is hinged to the cockpit closeout rib, but I can still set the location of where I want that cockpit closeout rib to be and then cut the door out with that and put the rib in afterwards and then hinge it all up and get it fitted because I think those parts are gonna take a lot of fine tuning anyway. So what I've done again is I put the gear in, you saw all that, and then I put the belly on and got everything fitted. And I've been really happy with how the alignment's been working out so far. Um, we'll see if it continues to trend like that, but basically I'm at the point where I'm gonna make the rough cutout of where I want the gear doors. I'm then gonna measure and basically transfer that pattern to the inside so I can make sure that the gear is gonna clear. Now they do have kind of a drawing that shows like a larger gear door cutout area that's recommended if you can swing it. So I'm gonna try and make those doors about as big as the plans will allow and then just make sure that everything clears. And I think that that's a little bit better way than what Lancer says, which is pretty much to just fit the gear itself to the doors. Now, another reason that I'm doing this while I am is I want to fit the gear doors and get the gear rigging and everything set with the plane actually upright. And I want to do that because there's always going to be a little bit of play in those parts, right? All those linkages that kind of set the gear position, they're at odd angles and they're, they're really set up well to have a lot of play in them. And as such, I want to make sure that the hydraulic cylinders will pull those into a certain spot against a stop on the cylinder itself, that way I'm not putting a bunch of stress um, in that cylinder. It's not like pulling against a, a hard stop on the gear itself. And then fit the doors knowing that location, again with gravity acting on it, because gravity is going to be pulling on this plane in normal straight level flight. And to me that makes a lot more sense. I don't want to run into a situation where I, I'm basically using more travel in the cylinder than I need to, and then that's putting tension on the gear, or maybe the gear is fine, but then that's putting a ton of tension on that door, and over time those thin, flexible parts are gonna crack. You do want a little bit of preload on those doors just so that they sit nice and tight, but again, I can flip this plane over, the top of the wing rib is not on yet, so I can do a bunch of gear swing tests once this is all set up, and I can set that tension exactly where I want it. So I still think this is the right approach for this, uh, but we'll see what happens moving forward. Well, I highly doubt this is the clip you were expecting to see next, but I did a lot of work uh, off camera. I had a buddy come out and help cut out the gear door holes as well as flip the airplane over because that really was a two-person thing. I didn't really want to film. Uh, so here's where we're at with the Lancer. Um, it's up on its gear. It's super exciting to see. I'm extremely happy. Um, it's just a huge like motivator to see this thing up on its gear, like looking like an actual airplane now. Um, but let this not be misconstrued. There is still a ton of work that needs to happen on this plane. Uh, I'm going to kind of hold off on the firewall forward for now, but that is going to happen pretty soon. So I'm going to be PCSing in about two months and I think it's going to be easiest to move this with the engine mounted. I don't want to like worry about dinging the engine up or bending something or breaking something because it's kind of a lot of money to, to have on the table. Um, so with that said, there's still a lot that needs to happen in the fuselage. I need to finish doing the layups on the inside of this uh, nose gear tunnel. Uh, that's pretty structural. I need to make the cockpit closeout ribs and those will seal off the cabin area from the uh, gear wells. I also need to glass in the main spar and the rear spar and then make the contact like transfer pads that will transfer all the load between the main spar and the fuselage. There's also some more taping and filleting that needs to happen between the belly and the fuselage itself. And then after that, I think I'm going to get started on the interior. Uh, my goal kind of being here that I can basically paint the interior while I'm here. I'm going to probably just prime it gray or use some splatter paint or something like that. But I think I can get kind of the seats in and the seat back put in and the tunnel that will allow um, electrics and the elevator push rods and rudder cables to go through the center there. 
Um, but yeah, that's kind of where we're at with this thing. Again, I'm not going to commit to the wings uh, quite yet, just because I think that'll be a little bit better off for when I move. But uh, yeah, this is where we're at with the plane. It's definitely moving along. Uh, next up, I think I'm going to be doing, showing a little bit of the glass work on the inside. That's pretty boring. So I think next up, we're also going to get a video of mounting the engine. But that's going to be it for this time. Thanks so much for watching. And I uh, hope this excites you guys as much as it excites me.